Hey, I'm glad you could join me today. I want to talk about an important subject. Misogyny is not something new in this world. It has existed for thousands of years. Misogyny, by definition, can be said to be the, the deep-seated hatred, contempt, or prejudice against women or girls. And it can reveal itself in many different ways, including discrimination, uh, objectification, belittlement, and even violence directed towards women simply because of their gender. In many countries and among uh, several religions, women are considered to be second-class citizens even today. Now, I realize that this is not a terribly new thing that I am reporting. The world is like that. Not all men are like this, but to varying degrees, uh, some are, many are, nationwide and worldwide. But here's, here's the thing that bothers me. And it should bother every man who considers himself to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Some men feel that the Bible gives them the right to hold just as much contempt toward women and girls as a person outside of Christ. I don't believe it is by a majority of the church by any means, but some Christian men view women as inherently wicked. And they will point to Eve as the source of this because she was the one who first ate of the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden. Some segments of the church have even taught over the ages that Eve had intimate relations with the snake leading to that sin. Now, that is among the silliest arguments I have ever heard. The Bible does not in any way teach this. Indeed, it it calls what happened, it never calls it Eve's sin, but instead it is referred to as Adam's sin. Why? Well, it is true that Eve first ate of the fruit. Now, why did she do it? Because she was inherently wicked? No. The Apostle Paul tells us that it was because Eve was deceived. And we'll look at that in a moment. Now, even Eve knew that God did not want her to do this, but her curiosity got the better of her when Satan came in the guise of the serpent, and you know the story. The serpent asked her about the restrictions that God had put in place in the garden, and Eve's answer was found in Genesis 3. And, she, and said, the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor touch it, shall you touch it, lest you die. And so Eve knew that she should not eat from that specific tree known as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But she was mesmerized by the words of the devil, and she ate. Bad decision. And then she invited Adam to take part in this sin. Read on. Genesis 3, 6, so that when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Now, exactly how did all of this come about? Where was Adam while his wife was taking the first bite of the fruit? Was he down the road, maybe? someplace, doing something elsewhere in the garden, perhaps? No. Adam was right there with Eve the whole time. Look, it tells us in chapter 3, verse 6, she also gave to her husband with her, with her, and he ate. Adam was with her. He stood there at the tree with his wife and watched this whole scene unfold. Adam was supposed to be the wise one, and he was. it was to, to him that God had directly given the command not to eat of the fruit of that one tree, with death being the penalty for not obeying. It appeared that Eve only heard of this command secondhand through her husband. Adam was supposed to be the protector of this woman. She was his co-heir to this kingdom, the earth, that God had given them. But he performed more like a potted plant than he did a 
a shield for his wife that God had designed him to be. Adam was on the scene, and yet he did not help his wife. And then to make things even worse, Adam willingly received the fruit from his wife, and he joined Eve in this disobedience. Eve sinned, no question. But Adam's sin was greater because he had a, a sense of his, his sin had a sense of being deliberate. She was deceived. He was not. Now, I wonder if he looked around to the left and to the right to see if God was watching before he ate. If only one of the two was to be convicted of wickedness, it would be Adam, not Eve. And that is why it is called Adam's sin. And the result was death. God had originally created both of them to live forever. But with that sin, the aging process started in mankind. And even worse, they were both separated from God. Neither did they ever walk with him again. And then they died. And death was spread through all of their offspring, including you and me. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to Timothy, looks back at this act. He refers to the more trusting nature of women as the reason why they should not be pastors or, or even Bible teachers to men. He said in second in first Timothy chapter two, he said, I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. Why? For Adam was formed first, then Eve. So that's the argu argument from the order of creation. But this is important. Verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. As Paul noted, he, Adam was not deceived. Focus on that. He could have prevented this whole thing from happening. He could have prevented sin from entering the world, at least at that instance. But instead, he let his wife carry the burden of trying to figure out the ramifications. She sinned because her husband did not do what was expected of him. And indeed, Adam deliberately joined her in that sin. And we all bear those consequences to this day. Do you realize that because of Adam's sin, we are born with a stain in our souls? Now, the saving grace in all of this is that God still loves us. And seeing our predicament, he sent his own son, Jesus Christ, into this world to save us. Jesus paid not only for our original sin, the one that we were born with because of the transgression of our first parents, but also for every sin we have ever committed. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 5, verse 20, says where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Aren't you glad for grace? So that sin, as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through the righteous, through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That means the grace of God is available to you today through Christ hanging on that cross where he offered himself in your place and in mine. Have you received him yet? It's a gift with your name on it. But you know what? Like all gifts, you have to willingly receive it. Do that. Do it today. Do it now. Tell Jesus that you want to be his, that you want the forgiveness from sins. Repent of your sins and the, because the gift of God is waiting for you now. Thanks for watching.